boys and girls, we're going to read another um, interactive read aloud for our language arts. Today we're going to talk about context clues. So sometimes there might be a word that you don't know what it means, but as you read it in a sentence, you can figure it out. Okay? You don't need to go look it up in a dictionary, you don't need to go ask mom, because you figure out the definition by reading it in text. Okay? Those words around it are called context clues. So we're going to focus on that today. So as we look on the left here, it says use context clues. If you read a word that you do not know, look at all the words around it. These clues from the text or context clues can help you figure out the meaning of the word. Okay, and we have a picture here. I think that is a cleaner shrimp. If I read the sentence underneath it, cleaner shrimp shrimp have the ability to clean a dirty fish. Okay, and they have ability in, in blue. What if I didn't know what the word ability meant? Hmm, I'm gonna keep reading. They can pick off tiny pieces of food from the fish. Okay, so they're showing us that the context clues are can pick off tiny pieces of food. Okay, so the ability, they're able to do this. The words can pick off tiny pieces of food give clues about what ability means. It means they're able to do that. Okay, try it together. Read these sentences. Looks for, look for context clues to tell what the word species and pattern mean. There are 17,000 species of butterflies in the world. These groups of butterflies all have different patterns and designs on their wings. Okay, so species. What does species mean? So if I read, there are 17,000 species of butterflies in the world. These groups, I'm thinking groups is probably, groups of butterflies is probably the species. How many butterflies? Okay, and this next one. These groups of butterflies all have different patterns and designs on their wings. I think pattern is like a design. Okay, a lot of times in your reading, that's how you'll get to learn some of these big words. Those of you that read a lot, You'll learn some big complex words and you can talk like you're very intellectual and smart because you all are. Okay, next page. The title of this read aloud is Working Together. Up in the right in that white rectangle, it says context across con connect across text. Sorry, I had the word context in my head. Connect across text. Read about two more of nature's amazing partners genre remember that's what type it is a science article so a science article can tell how things in nature work once again the title's working together and by lori wilkinson as the author there are many interesting partnerships in nature one unique pair is the honeybee and the flower each does a job that the other cannot do on its own honeybees and flowers need each other to thrive okay i'm looking down at the bottom in other words, partnerships are teams. Unique pair means they're a special team, and thrive is to live and grow. Okay, it says before we move on. Okay, set purpose. What do you already know from this page about bees and flowers? What, why will you read this article? Okay, so I already know that they need to work together. Okay, each does a job that the other one can't do. That's what I found out on this page. So now I'm going to continue reading because I want to know what each of their jobs is, how they, what they do to help each other out. Okay, number two, clarify. Find words that tell you what a partnership is, then say it in your own words. So if I look up to this paragraph again, there are many interesting paragraph partnerships in nature. One unique pair. Oh, a partnership is probably a pair. Okay. So through our text, let's see if we find anything else that partnerships could be. Honeybees need flowers. Remember that partnership, working together, they each have a job. Honeybees get their food from flowers. Flowers make a sweet juice called nectar. Bees drink the nectar. They fly to their hives. There they turn the nectar into honey for the babies to eat. Flowers also make pollen. Pollen helps new flowers grow. But for a honeybee, pollen is a good food. It has all the vitamins, minerals, and protein a bee needs. Okay, and it's pointing to the pollen. You can see he has pollen on him. 
A honeybee collects nectar and pollen from a flower. It's telling you the caption of that picture. That's what that is. In other words, vitamins, min minerals, and protein are healthy things. Okay, then we have, in other words, fewer means not many. Okay, we have a little arrow pointing up at that picture right there telling us the caption of the circle. It says a bee takes pollen from one flower to another. Okay, flowers need honeybees. Plants need honeybees to help them make more plants. When a bee sits on a flower, some pollen sticks to it. When the bee flies to other flowers, it spreads the pollen around. Without the honeybee, fewer new flowers would grow. And there we go back to our fewer where it says not many. Okay, so see how they help each other out. One, topic, the main idea. What is the topic of this article and what is the main idea? What is the topic? Okay, what are we talking about? Yeah, we're talking about the re relationship between honeybees and flowers. Okay, what is the main idea? That's right, how they help each other out, what they do to help the other one survive. Okay, they can't do those jobs on their own. They actually need each other. Okay, generalize. What general point can you make about how some insects help plants based on what you learned about honeybees? Okay, I want you to find somebody that's in the room with you, or I want you to hit pause and pretend like you're talking to your cat or your dog. And I just want you to generalize what you've learned, what point you've learned from the story about plants and about bees and how they can help each other. Okay, boys and girls, I love reading these language art stories with you and I love that it incorporates science into it. I know that Mrs. Davis was going to take you on a little tour of a friend that um, has some bees. So hopefully you learn a lot through your reading and through your observations. Remember, we can teach you a lot. We could teach you every hour of every day. But the more you read, the more knowledgeable you'll become. Okay, there's more books and more information in the world than any teacher could teach you. So I hope you enjoyed today's reading. Bye.